All right, so this tutorial is part three of our uh, drawing a door in uh, is a door family in Revit. Um, and so what we're going to do in this family, what we've got is our, we've got our door geometry created. I've got a little simple uh, door with a little glass panel in it. And we've got some parameters that cr control the style width and the rail width of that door, and of course the height and width and thickness of the door. All right, so what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to give a, um, we've got this 2D geometry here drawn to represent the plan swing, but what I need to do is I need to create a parameter here for this door, a visibility parameter, that turns that door off um, in, uh, uh, in the plan view. All right, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to select the door. All right, so I'm going to select the actual geometry of the door, and actually this may be easier to do in the elevation view, because it's easier to see that geometry and select it. All right, and uh, what I do is, um, I go to this over here, which is Visibility Graphics Override. All right, and um, so what it says here is a view specific display. display. Just a second. Could you go back sure, yeah, no problem. Okay, so to do this is a little easier to do in a 3D in a 3D axonometric view here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to actually pick the geometry, then over here on the properties, Visibility Graphics Overrides. I'm going to edit that, and it says View Specific Display Display in 3D View and uh, plan view, I'm going to say no, I don't want it to show up in plan view. Um, front and back is good, and then when cut in RCP, and I'm going to say no, not in that. Alright, so just uncheck the plan RCP, and when cut in the, um, when cut in the plan RCP, alright, and then say OK. So i got to do that for each geometry, so I'm going to do that for the glass, I'm going to do that for the door on the other side, alright, do I go to visi visibility graphics overrides, Uncheck the plan RCP, uncheck the, when cut in plan RCP. Okay, and then the glass over here. All right, do the same thing. All right, so then let's test this thing out. All right, so let's uh, create a new project. Okay, and so go to new and project. Go to the architectural template. All right, I'm going to create a wall to put that door in. Okay, I'm going to step backwards here. Go back to the family, load family into project. And there. Okay, so now when I load it in the project, when I'm looking at it in a plan view, you notice you don't see the 2D, uh, the door in the closed position. You don't see the 3D geometry. You just see that, um, that family geometry here. All right, let's go to the 3D view. And notice in the 3D view, you see the door in the closed position but you don't see any of that plan view geometry. So, so far, so good. That's exactly what we want to see. All right, so let me close this project file so I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to say close, say no. All right, so that's good. So uh, we've got all of that. All right, so the next thing we want to do is I'm going to create some material parameters for my door and glass. Um, so I'm going to create two material parameters, one for the door frame and then one for the, um, for the actual glass. All right, so to do that, to create a material parameter for this geometry, what I do is I select the geometry, so I'm going to select the door frame, and I go over here to properties, and there's this little white button here to the right of the uh, material parameter. All right, and when it says by category like this, that basically means there isn't a, a a material assigned to it. So let me just pick this little white button here. All right, and it says add parameter, so that's what I want to do, and I'm going to call this one. Let's call it door material. All right, and then hit OK. All right, and then select that geometry, pick the parameter. All right, and this one, since I already have door material created, I can just pick it out of the list. I don't need to go add parameter. So that one I want to assign to door door material. All right, now let's pick that piece of glass. So glass there. All right, same process. Go over here to materials or in the properties dialog box, and say add material, add parameter. And we'll call this glass material. And then say OK. All right, let's go to the other door. I'm going to pick that geometry there. And I'm going to the properties dialog box, the little white button here, and then say glass material. OK. All right, so that's it. So now I've got my glass material in there. So now I want to actually assign materials to it. To assign materials to those two parameters, I have to go back to four blue squares. Go up here, click on that. 
All right, and there's my two materials that I just created: glass material and door material. All right, so let's give a let's give those some actual materials. So let's go to uh, there by category, and then see that little box with the three dots in it. All right, so I've got glass in here. These are basically all the uh, all the uh, materials that I have loaded into this family, and they're all these default ones, uh, real ugly guys. So these are materials that I can add into the project. All right, so I've got this is a uh, let's see, let's just kind of scroll through here. Let's go down to wood. If I scroll down over here and I say to wood, these are my choices. So I've got a couple different woods: teak, redwood, plywood. Let's just do red oak. All right, so I'll do that one. So I'm going to pick that one, red oak, and I'm going to hit this little up button here to push it into the project. So now when I do that, it pushes it into the project. So now it's part of the project. All right, red oak. So I'm going to select that one and say OK. And it assigns it now to the, so the, this parameter here, oops, I did glass. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I did the wrong one. Uh, so glass material is now set to red oak. Let's change that real quick. Sorry about that. All right, let's change glass to glass. That sounds good. All right, so I'm going to go glass, and I say OK. So now the glass material parameter is set to glass. And door material, let's go to that one. That one will set to red oak. All right, and say OK. All right, so now those guys are set to glass and red oak. All right, so let's change our, um, let's just check these guys one last time. Let's change that to two inches. Basically what I'm doing is I'm checking it with my um, parameters here. So let's see, our door thickness is two inches, our height is seven, our width is six, and then all these rails, rail and style widths are all four. So let's go there. All right, so that's four inches. Oops. Four, four, and four, and then height is seven, width is six. Okay, good, and okay. All right, so it resets it. So, uh, and now you can actually even see. Now that I set that to glass. You can actually see through the door. Let me s switch it to um, realistic. It looks a little bit better. So that's what my door actually looks like right now. All right, so that's good. And let's go back to our, pro our project here. So the last thing we had to do in here was create a 72 by 84 um, uh, door type. So to do that, let's go back to the project file. And to do that, to create a new type, I'm going to go to four blue squares. All right, so four blue squares. And what I'm going to do is going to create a new type. And so to do that, up here it says family and types under four blue squares. I'm going to say new. And that one was called 72 by 84. All right, so we'll just, just call it that, 72 inches by 84 inches. And then say OK. And so I'm assuming that 84 is the height. Yeah, 7 feet. And 72, which is 6 feet. So good. So 6 foot by 7 foot door, 72 by 84. Then I hit OK. And now I've got my type created. All right. So... Let's. All right, so let's load this into a project and just test it out real quick. So I'm going to create a new project. So I go up to the big blue R, go to New Project. I'm going to select my architectural template. Say OK. All right, I'm going to jump back to my Revit family. I'm going to say Load into Project. All right, so it's. Yeah, well, e either way, because it's loaded into the project. Now I just draw the wall. So you could do it in either either way. And then I go to the door, and then that's pretty much the only door I've got loaded in there. Select that. All right, so there's my door. Uh, so I go to the door, and notice it's got that type in there, so 72 by 84. It's the only type I've got for that door. All right, um, and let's try it. Let's just edit type just to kind of test it out real quick. All right, so let's go to a let's see an 8-foot wide door. Good, it all stretched out, good. I go to the 3D view. I look at it there, okay. Let's change the height. Select the door, go to edit type. Change the height of the door to nine feet. Okay, good. So uh, one thing though that I did do, it's important to note when I did that, I actually screwed up my type that I just created. So I did a 72 by 84 type, and um, so what I did was I selected the door, 
and when I changed the geometry and edit type, it changed it for that type. So it's still the 72 by 84 type, but it's 8 foot by 9 foot. So remember, when you do that, uh, when you do that, uh, when you test it out in the family, you may want to just create a new type so that you don't mess up that original type. So let me just switch it back to what it was, 6 foot by 8 foot, or sorry, 7 foot by 6 foot. All right, so that's it. That's basically um, the door and the geometry. Now, when I was talking earlier, let me close the project file. I was talking earlier. I said there was a 50-50 chance of getting that plan view with those symbolic lines right. So let me show you my workaround for it. So assuming you did that, and you did the little three-point arc, and it wasn't working at all. So let me show you how to do it. Um, and let me just delete these guys real quick. All right. And I'm just going to keep those where they are. OK, so uh, the workaround basically is this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new reference plane. I'm going to draw it across the top here, all right, like that. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter a dimension and then a parameter, so dimension that reference plane, and I'm going to dimension it back down to this exterior reference plane. All right, that's three and some change. I'm going to call this parameter half door width. All right, so that, or you can call it whatever you want, I guess, but um, I'm going to select it, label, add parameter, and we'll just call it something real simple like half door. All right, say OK. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to set this as a set a, uh, a formula on this door so that it's going to be half the width, right? So it's going to be basically the, the width of one door. So I go to four blue squares. I go to half door. All right, that's it there. I go over here to formula. And what I want to do is I'm going to set a formula so that this parameter will always be one half the width. So to do that, let me just stretch this over here real quick. I type in width. You have, and when you do formulas, you have to type the text in exactly how it appears, like with all the spaces, everything capitalized, and all that sort of stuff. So I go width, capital W. It's not even close. Width, yeah, that is. Sorry, width, and then I'm going to say divided by two. This is the divide symbol, is the little little forward slash. The width divided by two, and then it'll always be three feet. So whatever I make this width, that'll always be half of it. So that'll be the the length of one door. So I say OK. All right. And then what I have to do then is uh, stretch these guys and attach them to that reference plane. All right. So I go A, L. All right. And then lock it. And then align and lock it there. Change that back to four inches so that it shrinks back up. There you go. Okay, so now let's just test this thing out. Let me zoom out a little bit, put that in the corner. All right, so let's change our width and just see how that works. So let's change our width to four or to eight feet, and notice that width half half door is four feet, and I say apply, and good. So then it stretches that door. So then what now what's happening is that this just reference reference line up here is pulling that that uh, those doors and uh, correcting the width. So let's now put in that um, that arc. All right, so let's try that. So I go to annotate, yeah, symbolic line. All right, let's do a three-point arc. I'm going to go to there, to there. All right, and then up to there. All right, let's see if that'll work. Let's try that out. Now I did the three-point arc on that one. So let's go there and then let's change the width to seven feet. Good, it shrunk it back down. Now you, sometimes if you may not want to use the three-point arc. Um, sometimes you may find that it may also work with the uh, this one here. This is the uh, center end arc. All right, and so what you do is you start with the center point, which is down here at the hinge. And then you go to um, the first point, and then go to the second point. All right, so I'll do that again. So center, then you go to the start point of that arc, and the end point of that arc. There. Okay, and now let's see if that one works as well. All right, let's make it nine feet wide. Good, and that one stretched it too. 
So those are two, you know, those are that's a possible workaround if you can't get that, that three-point arc to work uh, initially. So, all right, so that basically wraps up our uh, tutorial on the, uh, on the doors, and uh, that's about it. Thanks.